Assalamu alaikum. My name is Sivan. I'm the host of the Mindful Muslim podcast. Uh, for this session, I spoke to Adam Afghan. We had a great conversation and we spoke about mental health, his own struggles with OCD, anxiety and bouts of depression. We also spoke about uh, social media and lots of other things. Inshallah, tune in um, and I hope you enjoy it. so much for joining us Adam. No problem. Assalamu alaikum. Um, why don't we kick off with you telling us what you're up to at the moment, what you're spending your time on inshallah mm -hmm. and then if it's okay with you I'd like to delve later a little bit deeper into your background and um, what kind of led you to being who you are today essentially. Okay it's a deep um, question. Yeah deep, so some deeper, deeper questions <laughs> later inshallah so <laughs> okay. um, yeah kick us off with what you're up to right now. So mainly sleeping um, uh, no, Jerry, so mainly nine to five jobs. I'm a UX researcher, so mm -hmm. I'm a researcher in computer science, psychology. It's kind of like that. So that's okay. mainly most of my time that I do. Yeah, I have to make money to pay mm. for food and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and side, uh, most of my time other than that is spent on Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I train out of Rodri Gracie Academy in West London, so most of my time is there, and I work. And other than that, some Islamic studies and the mental health work. Alhamdulillah, most alhamdulillah. of my time and sleeping, as I said. I'm also aware of your some charity work and volunteering. Is that right? I did. You've so done yeah. So before I used to uh, volunteer for Friends of Al Aqsa, Human Care Syria. Mm. I went to the Syrian border um, near Turkey. It's Tell me of, more about that. So basically, some I knew a group of brothers, mashallah, um, and uh, brothers and sisters actually, and they regularly did trips. They did trips to Calais um, mm. to help refugees, like literally hand in hand stuff, like me to you, no middleman, no charity, hundred percent. Right all goes to the people in need. Right. One time they're like, cool, let's go. Um, I went to Palestine with them before um, oh, sure. and we organized a trip to go to, um, I forgot where it was now, um, Turkey Adana, which is um, Rihanli as well, I think. It was the border between Syria and mm -hmm. Turkey. Mm -hmm. And what we did, we just raised money and we literally took the money there, gave it to families in an envelope to help mm -hmm. pay for their rent, help pay for their food, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm. Alhamdulillah. Um, so tell us more about yourself, your background, where you come mm -hmm. from. Uh, so were you born in the UK? I was born in Hammersmith. Uh, <laughs> so my, uh, heritage wise, yeah. I'm Afghan. So more specifically, I'm Pashtun. So okay. it's like a mix between Afghan culture and Pakistani culture. I'm part Pakistani and Afghan. That's the, the easiest way for me to explain it. Um, well, uh, <laughs> I grew up, so I was born in Hammersmith, grew mm -hmm. up in Southampton, so mm -hmm. I grew up in a very kind of, very kind of English environment. Yeah. There's not a lot of Muslims, we very, very, very much minority. Mm. Um, then finished my master's degree here mm -hmm. in London, then mm -hmm. lived here for the last five years in a very, very much more Muslim community, which I'm really nice. Um, yeah, that's, a, and then- We skipped a little bit, so your we, undergrad yeah. was- Oh, sorry, I got a, my bachelor's degree in computing and my master's degree is in, human computer interaction nice. um, with the ergonomics like computer science and psychology. Nice, nice. Mm. So I'm also aware that you suffer from OCD, mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. anxiety and bouts mm -hmm. of depression. Yeah. When did that kind of start, if you will? Was it a sudden thing? Did you notice it yeah. gradually or mm -hmm. how? So basically like two years ago now, this is when I was officially like diagnosed with it. Mm. I had these, so basically I, okay, before let's backtrack a little bit. So. My whole life, I always had this weird like anxiety problem. I used to be like really worried to go back, say from summer holidays, to go back on the first day of school. I used to be really get really anxious, like really because I'm just going to see my friends. The same mm. routine, um, and when I don't have a routine, I kind of get anxious. So all these little things when I was younger were kind of built up until mm. now, um, and these little signs of kind of anxiety and stuff. So anyway, what other things were there? So apart from you feeling nervous about returning to school, were there other things that triggered your anxiety? Just general worrying a lot, mm. like over little things. Like it was general, like being out of routine, like mm. coming back, going on holiday was is a big thing for me mm. because change of environment and stuff. And it makes you very anxious. It makes right. me very strange. I don't like, I don't feel comfortable, mm. but then you had to kind of, I had to train myself to get out of it. That was when mm. I was younger. Mm. I have a flashback, like 15 years later, 
um, I started getting these really horrible thoughts in my head. Um, they're called intrusive thoughts now, but they used to come into my head. And I was like, that's weird. Why am I thinking like that? Just random points during the day. Random points during the day when I was praying, when I was on the tube, when I was walking around. I was like, that's weird. That's mm. not nice. And it's usually, it was usually, I don't want to say what it is, but it's like, um, mm. they, they're not nice. And intrusive thought, mm. thoughts are thoughts which are completely opposite of who you are. So mm. they're things which are completely opposite to your nature. Um, for example, some people have something called relationship OCD where they, um, let me let me give you a better example. Some people have um, it's like harm OCD where they won't. They're so they think, oh, what if I stabbed my dad in the kitchen? Mm. I'm capable of stabbing my dad, and this thought will come into their head. Usually, normal people, normal people, mm. the thought will come in and it will go straight back out. But with people with OCD and intrusive thoughts, it will go into their head and it will stay and it will stay and stay until they kind of convince themselves mm -hmm. that they want to kill their dad. Do you see what I mean? They would want, so they won't go near knives, they won't go in the kitchen because they're worried that they may- Do get, it. Even though it's completely never gonna happen. Mm. It's completely opposite to their nature, but that obsession about it mm. stays in their mind. And if you can imagine something like that, and you don't know it's a disorder, you don't know it's actually a genetic issue, mm -hmm. you start to think, what's wrong with me? You start to think, oh my God, what's happening? What's happening? And right. stuff like this started happening to me. And sometimes they can be very disturbing stuff, like mm -hmm. really like stuff that very hard to say. Mm -hmm. um, and it led me, this kept happening. It happened once and I was like, shut up, Adam. So Come were on. you at university at this time? No, I was, I was working at this time. So I just- You'd finished? Two years after I finished my master's degree. Right, okay. Um, some they used to come in every so often mm. like for example i used to read something in the newspaper mm. and it used to be some person who did something terribly bad i can't remember what it was right but, and i'd be like what if i did that mm. am i that am i like him and then imagine that would never go until you start convincing yourself you're like this terrible person wow. um that and then that usually went out but mm. then once it gets a bit more kind of it keeps staying there and one time i was praying and i was like what is this and then obviously after time i was like, okay let me talk to my sheikh about this. And and he was like, okay, we were assigned quite normally. And I told him about this. I was like, I've got these really horrible thoughts. Maybe I'm possessed. And was I know- Was he the first person you went to? Yeah, yeah, this is the he first moment. So I asked him, I was like, look, I don't know what's happening. This is very odd for me. This is like, I didn't say exactly what it was. Yeah. But I was like, I, this is something very strange. I'm thinking very strange things. Things are coming to my mind, it's very odd. And he was like, it could be that. Okay, so cool. Well, I'll talk to some other brothers who's more experienced in it. Okay. And one of my, that's my, as a Muslim, sometimes that's the first thing we go to, a jinn possession. Like, right. and I was like, okay, this could be that. Maybe, maybe what did I do? Maybe, because mm. I went to, I went to the Syrian border, maybe something happened there. Mm. And then he was like, we were saying, I have to call see, we were saying quite all the time. And he was like, this doesn't really seem like it. There's nothing, you're not, this is not the typical signs of someone who has this. And I was like, cool. Then it kept going on and on and on. And mm. I was getting it, it was making my mind exhausted. I couldn't mm. concentrate at work. Mm. Um, and what I did, one day I was going to a meeting and I was on a tube. Mm -hmm. I remember this quite clearly. I was sat on a tube and I was like, how can I stop this? I literally thought, I'm actually losing my mind now. Maybe this is like, when you see in films, people going crazy. This is, maybe this is my, maybe this is me. This is that what's coming to me. Maybe I've, I've lost it now. This is it. And I'm like, okay, cool. Then I was like, maybe the only way for me to fix this, to kill myself. Maybe this is the, that's the only solution mm -hmm. to get out of this. And I was like, okay. That, that point for me, I remember that how I felt. I was like, that is literally an, a viable option now. Because sometimes we have fleeting thoughts. Oh man, this life's rubbish. What right. if I just did? We have fleeting thoughts coming out of your head. We, right. I think we all have that as humans. Right. But um, this was like, okay, this is an option. Mm. Oh my God, this is, and it was really scary to be honest. I was really scared. You so thought you had no other choice. I was like, how else can I live? Like had you this? tried turning to someone at work it, or the, a boss or a colleague no, or anything like that? It was that? so, um, it was such a thing is that intrusive that sort of thought itself is so up it's so horrible mm. and sometimes disturbing that i can't even tell anyone about it it was it was so and it's like some people there's, there's so many different examples of it mm. um mm. did you think about turning to people at work because i'm very interested not in, at work uh, i never tell anyone at work <laughs> that's because generally it's such a my family, so what I did, what I did after the tube, so I was sitting on the, I was sitting mm. on the tube, right? Mm. Then I was like, I was in this meeting, I, was like, oh, I just had to leave, I started crying, I was like, I can't, I don't know what to do. Mm. I was like, I have to tell my mum, I have to tell my mum. Mm. And I was on the phone to my mum, and my mum, I was like, mum, I was like, I've come in these suicidal thoughts. I told so hard to say. And mum was like, well, I'm sorry, crying, obviously. And mm. then, um, mm. and then I was like, 
this is why. And I told her why. Mm. And she was like, that's very weird. Why? And she was like, you need to go find a therapist or find some counselor or something. I was like, yeah. So what she did, she went on Google. I'm going to bless my mum. She mm. found, she's not very good with computers. She found a Muslim therapist for me in London. Mm. Mother bless them both. And, mm. and what I did the next day, I, le- I called this therapist in the morning. I was like, cool. She picked up the phone. She was like, oh, so I can tell me, tell me what's going through your mind. Mm. And I told her mm. again, very hard to say, because it's though, as men anyway, it's very difficult for us to, Say these, Why do you think that is, Adam? I don't know. I I'm I don't know. Maybe mm. because you don't. We're just uh, I don't know. The template for a man, like the blueprint for being a man, mm. is um, yeah, conditioning our environment. Yeah, environment. Just like generally, we're not. We don't talk. We're just like, oh yeah, I've got problems. I'll oh, just get through it. I soldier through it. Mm. It's stuff like that. And I was like, mm. it was hard for me to say this. Stuff. I guess particularly when it comes to mental health. Yeah, because there's something mm. not visible. You can't see. Yeah. And it's, yeah, with mental health, it's it's funny because um, it's like, I know loads of men are probably suffering in silence. And just because there's no outlet and it's not um, normalized for us to talk about it, mm-hmm. it, um, it just becomes, it just becomes worse for us. And it's just like a right. vicious cycle right. of like And pain. the statistics in the UK, we all know are staggering. Yeah, like I think it's like 75% of male su- suicide of male, something like that. Then Samaritans did some, um, I got some data on that, mm-hmm. but. Alhamdulillah, mm. but mm. what exactly? So mm. when I when when I talked to the therapist, that mm. was like a huge turning point for me. Mm. If my I didn't tell my mom firstly, and if I d- didn't get a therapist, right. I may not be alive. Right. That's why I'm it's it's um crazy. So anyway, when I told the therapist mm. on the phone, mm. I was driving to work in the car. I talked to her on the car on the phone, and she goes, "Adam, this is OCD." Like this, this she told me straight away. I was like, mm. "What was this OCD?" She says, "It's intrusive thoughts." I booked a session with her. The next day on Saturday, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then I think it was Saturday or Thursday. It was, it was two days later or a day later. Mm-hmm. And she was like, "Look, so OCD. Go on the internet, search for intrusive thoughts and OCD, and read up on it." Went into work, typed it in Google. And I was like, "Oh my god, this is exactly what I have. This is exactly, literally, word for word." How did it feel then? I was it was so much relief because mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh my god, I'm not, I'm not going crazy. I'm not." And at that point, I was like, "I don't have to kill myself." And it was like, wow. I can't. And so well, it was, it was amazing. Um, and then, but that's when the work started starting then because it was like, oh, I'm cured. It was even I need now, to heal and yeah, I need to. Mm. It's a battle with this all the time. So mm. over, I went for a session with a therapist and it was private as well. And that's one thing I want to say. The NHS isn't very well equipped to deal with mental health. Right. But when it's at that point of such dire needs as I was in, mm. or I was like, I need help now. I don't mm. know what's happening. Mm. Just pay the money. It's like, some of us mm. don't have it, but just go pay it. Like it's not, you can't put a, you can't put a price on your, your yeah. health. So. The two main points that you raised there were speaking out yeah. to a loved one, mm-hmm. somebody that you know that cares mm-hmm. about you. Mm-hmm. And then secondly, to get that professional help. Yeah. it's um. I think the speaking out is very important. Like after I tell my mum, mm. I talk about it all the time now. I'm talking to you now about mm. it. I would never have done this a few years ago. So mm. it's um. once you do it, it, it becomes so much easier Thank to talk you. about it. Um. And that is that is like the crucial thing, literally opening up. And obviously, as women, it's a lot easier. And I guess well, I'm not a woman, so I can't say. But mm. for men, we don't talk about it. We just like, yeah, oh, mm. I'm struggling. Mm. And then if it does happen that mm. a man, go, your friend, open your brother opens up to you, mm. it's odd. It's like, oh, what's happening here? But you need to help him. But it's just, Absolutely. it's not, it's out of the ordinary. So we. What have do to, you think the yeah. best response would be? Say you hadn't mm. told your mum, yeah, and you'd told a really good friend of yours, yeah how should how you know how could they have responded that would have been helpful to mm. you um i'm just thinking of potentially yeah. people in our audience that might be in a similar situation it's, and they couldn't turn to their parents or their siblings exactly or, so I'm, i have a good relationship with my mom so mm. that was the first one right. thought some right. people don't have that so your friend go to your friend look i need to talk to you i'm struggling this is mm. this is something mm. i need to talk to you properly about this mm. and if you do that um that person because they love you and care about you they know you're suffering they'll f- try and find some way to help and if it was me i'd be like okay go to the doctor right. like talk to the doctor about it. even though right. as i said the nhs aren't the best equipped mm. that's a starting point or therapy straight away and i know for me i need to go to a muslim ther- therapist because i can't be bothered to explain how everything works right. like it's right. it was just easy i was like right. straight in bang yeah, still mashallah there are some organizations in the uk that are muslim based mm-hmm. and also that actually um can help financially as well oh, exactly. i'm aware that some of them don't require you know funds essentially if mm-hmm. you can't afford to yeah. if you 
you know, don't let that stop you kind of yeah. approaching those organizations mm-hmm. because exactly. uh, inshallah they can still help. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it, yeah, it's important. Even if you find these organizations, just get, just make that first step Absolutely. to like, let's get better. Let's, you have to do it for yourself ultimately. Yeah, and that's the, that's the biggest thing. It's like a monster. You have to, if you, the more you run away from it, the bigger it's going to get. Right. Have you seen the film, The It? The clown film. No one's seen it. No. Um, basically, it's about it's about a basically. Let me. This is the, this is basically the tangent. Best, okay. This is the best analogy of mental health and OCD for me okay. to fight against it. Okay. So OCD, all the and specifically OCD, but mental health in general, mm. depression. Mm. It's it's like this monster, and in the film, that it, it's about this monster mm. that takes your biggest fear and it will haunt you and haunt you and haunt you and it won't go. And it uses your fear against you. Exactly. So it will use your fear against you. And, right. And it, it will never, it, it stays with these people their whole lives and their kids when they're adults. Right. And some people in the, the Stephen King book there and also the film, hmm. they kill themselves because the, the fear is just too much. They too can't. Much. But as soon as they stop and they start fighting it and they don't give into the fear, they push through it, the monster starts getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it, just it is it's just it's gone so that's the energy to use it's like there's a monster you have to mm. confront the fear you have to confront the problems head on you can't run away from it don't it's not going to get better mm. if you don't confront the problem right. it's like with anything in life you need to tackle it head on you have to face Absolutely. up to it and i say this i've said this before in the, the paper i wrote for Rooted of minds mm-hmm. real courage is tackling this head on it's not pretending it's not there mm. i'll be fine no, it's the, the real courage and what a real definition of being a man is, is being brave. Absolutely. And being brave, tackling these issues, your health issues head on is what we need to start doing. Absolutely. That's my analogy. Absolutely. You're mm-hmm. uh, very vocal about the fact that um, men in particular need mm-hmm. to, but uh, likewise for women and girls as well. Definitely. You definitely. know, mm. just realizing you need to treat yourself. You can't. Yeah wait and it will go away it's not that kind of situation no it's not and it's like it's a part of loving yourself like i say mm. this all the time i'm big big love yourself like mm. is it really loving yourself if you're not taking care of yourself absolutely like oh get it will get better ah, it's just me oh, i'm having a bad time and it's not it's not like all you of know. us are suffering from these difficulties exactly one in three of us suffer from depression mm. you're not alone i think that's the biggest thing mm-hmm. um and getting that diagnosis as well yeah talking mm-hmm. to someone and yeah. getting the help you need inshallah mm-hmm. sure and just taking that first step that's the first step to mm. getting better and loving yourself more and then like it's like if i saw myself two years ago i was like damn that's crazy like where i was in now and i've been through therapy medication um so many different things like right. and different battles but mm. you just keep facing it and you keep fighting and you keep talking about it and then you open up to other people and oh my god my friend he's got he suffers the same stuff as me that's and then I was like, damn, you, this is almost exactly the same. What is this? And, right, right. and online forums. Yeah, yeah. And, the more we talk about yeah. it, the more it's normalized and people exactly. can just be more open and get treatment more quickly, inshallah. Mm-hmm. And then more people talk about it. Mm. People are more uh, open about it. There's more, um, what's, what's the word? More eyes on it, which means people accept it more. It's easier for everyone to talk about it. Absolutely. It takes people out of this horrible dark place they're in, mm. brings them back and we can all kind of help each other get better. Absolutely. That's a beautiful idea, but it's hard to do sometimes. Inshallah, we'll get there. Inshallah. Yeah, me, yeah, me. Um, you have done some work with Inspirited Minds. I did. Some research you mentioned. Why don't you I tell did, us a so bit more about that? What I did. So over this like few years of like going through some ge- general hardships and stuff and the mm. OCD and mm. like anxiety, friends mm. and depression for a bit and the whole mental well-being side of things. There's not a lot of Islamic mental health stuff. It's always like... So, there's n- it's Muslims, uh, current Muslims, we're not that well equipped to really deal with it it's always like oh, go pray iman stuff right, like that right. but when you talk about well, I read this book by Dr Aid al Qani. it's called Don't Be Sad and I was like this book's amazing alhamdulillah it's like the best book for practical advice to get through difficult times don't be sad don't be sad yeah it's amazing everyone should read it mm. um, when I was reading it I was like wow this is amazing so mm. I was started to read loads of other different books on this thing of like being not being sad mm-hmm. lessons from the quran and hadith about being optimistic and getting through these hard times because mm-hmm. the prophets they were tested the most and if you take those examples and then you look into it a bit more and the scholars the scholarly kind of analysis on it mm-hmm. you can really take amazing examples it's not it. that your hardships are smaller less not significant at all. Not at all. because 
pain is so subjective mm-hmm. exactly um, mm-hmm. and relative so to every person yeah but reading those you know yeah. struggles that prophets go through yeah and went and through is strength I'm, for you exactly and what Allah tells us in the Quran I'm reading I'm like wow and it changed your perspective and one of the so what I did I kind of collated all this thing I learned Islamically mental, mental health and trying to get having these practical steps to try and increase your mental well-being and fight right. this battle in our minds. Right. And I kind of made this like little paper, got the quotes on it, but put it all together. Sure. Yeah. And I gave it to this Ritz Mines, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Yeah. And alhamdulillah, a lot of people liked it. And what I wanted to get from that is like, these are practical steps you can do. Within our deen, mashallah. With our deen yeah. to, get, to get better. Um, and because I, because some people, we turn to other things that which don't help mm. as much and like, oh, this, that. Mm. Read this, this might help you, inshallah. And one of the main points mm. which I find is like the overarching thing is the qadr of Allah. So destiny, whatever is written, what sometimes whatever hardship that befalls us, Allah meant for us to happen. That don't start thinking, why has this happened? Mm. I can't believe it. Mm. And I was talking to one of my teachers yesterday, actually, and he told me something quite profound. He was like, I was telling him like, what if we could lose so much in this life? Our loved ones, our, our, our people we care about, they could all be taken in a second. And I was like, how do we carry on moving right. through this life right. when this could happen any second? He was like, I'll never reward him. He was like, um, he's like, Adam, this is what he was like. He said, this, you need to be patient because this, your life, this, this world here is just a chapter. Mm. Don't dwell on this chapter too much. Don't, whatever happens here, you'd be building the next life. So, and it was like a chapter of a book. So whatever bad happens here, this isn't that, this isn't, this isn't going to last that long. It's just part of your story. It's just part of your chapter. Mm. And I was like, that's quite deep actually, because sometimes we get we get so caught up in everything that's happening now in our world here. We don't see the bigger picture. There's a whole book. There's right. a, we're stuck on chapter one, chapter two. Right. Like, there's a the rest of the story. Or caught up in the past and what's happened. That's done. We've read that already. Let's right. move on. Let's go. Right. And there's a bigger picture. And the next chapter is John, inshallah. So sure. if we build in this life and we be patient, Whatever Allah, whatever good and the bad is all from Allah. So mm. we be patient. We and what we see Allah. as bad may not necessarily exactly. be bad. Exactly. It, it could be building something for us in this life or in the next. So Inshallah. alhamdulillah, what can I say? Just you got to be patient. I know Absolutely. everyone says that, sabr, 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 but it's, yeah. it's very important. It's, you have to constantly remind yourself. Mm. Even the worst hardships could happen, but mm. Allah made this happen for you. There's, mm. n- you couldn't avoid it. There's no if, why, not. Mm. You couldn't avoid it. This was always going to happen. You just got to crack on, be patient. Alhamdulillah, that's it. Alhamdulillah. Tell us what other things helped you through your hardships, <clears throat> apart from the research that you did mm-hmm. into Islam. Mm-hmm. And mashallah, it's full of, you know, mm-hmm. things that you can take from it, techniques that you found. Yeah. Just the thoughts that you mentioned there mm-hmm. about going through Qadr and other yeah. things, uh, looking at the Prophet stories. Mm-hmm. Were there other more practical things that you did? There was, yeah. um, it's different for everyone, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But for you personally, what were the other things that helped you a lot? So one of the things that helped is generally being active. So sometimes we get in the like the, the situation where we just sit at home, do nothing, right. doing sports. So Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for me mm. it is amazing therapy because... Um, when you immerse yourself in something, an activity which literally takes everything out of your head, you're so focused on something. It could be a sport activity, it could be reading a book, it could be an activity that you like doing. Right. And it takes your mind off everything. And once you finish that activity and you go back into the real world, you get a sense of like ease. It's like, oh, I had a break. And it's a nice mm-hmm. break for your mind. And over time, if you keep practicing these things, being active, going to sports, mm-hmm. being healthy, eating right, all these things, it builds up into your into your mental well-being and it helps you feel better and alhamdulillah making mm, those habits yeah these small habits mm. build up to alhamdulillah, amazing things if you start sitting at home mm. ordering pizza every day not going out with your friend not right. seeing your family right. like one thing for me which is amazing so i got a little niece and left um two nieces and a little niece as well mm-hmm. alhamdulillah Allah bless them um, um and what all well, my therapist told me she was like Go see them because playing with kids and physical touch, all these things, go hug, mm. go hug your family. Go connection. Your, connection, physical contact. It, it, it's so, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. And, and it's those little things that you think, oh, it's not, it might mm. not make a difference. Mm-hmm. Or if you're so down and yeah. so unhappy, it's mm-hmm. really difficult. Like mm-hmm. we're talking about it. Just do it, just yeah. go do it. But yeah. actually for somebody in that position, mm-hmm. 
it's extraordinarily difficult. Yeah, like it's so hard, you know. Mm. Like even so. to get out of bed in the morning sometimes is difficult. Mm. Even to like, I know that feeling inside. It's like this void. It's it's not nice at all. But that it's another different monster you got about. You got to right. get up. You got to fight. You and there's up. always light at the end of the tunnel, but you have to not yeah. be afraid and, and just take mm -hmm. that first step. Is that my, one of my favorite quotes? It's like that saying, um, what's it? The, the night is darkest just before the dawn. So it gets so dark until the sun rises up. So alhamdulillah, it gets dark, but the sun's going to come up. So you just got to have patience and keep going, keep going. And be proactive. Alhamdulillah. We haven't spoken about um, social media, actually. Yeah. And the climate that we're li mm -hmm. living in right now yeah. and how much that does impact. Uh, everyone. It, yeah, it does. Um, so social media has changed over the past 10 years when Facebook came out. Um, and we've checked, mm. uh, the technology has, it's always highlighting the highlights of someone's life. It never shows the low lights. It's right. always the highlight reel. And then if I'm sat here with my in my house, I'm, I'm feeling low and I go on Instagram, mm. I go on Facebook, I go on mm. Snapchat, someone's mm. at a party, someone's looks amazing body, they mm. look so great, they're mm. on a holiday, mm. they've just got married. It just compounds everything. It's so if you're bang, 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 if you're happy, already happy, happy. extremely unhappy, exactly. you're depressed and you're flicking through Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. It's like, okay, you're having a great time, still here, having a rubbish time. Um and all these little kind of micro interactions we have in pick up your phone, check it a few minutes. Right. It again builds up. It's a lot of negativity. Did you cut that out ever of your life? Oh yeah, I I did. I really, I my person, I stop start stop posting anything positive about my life because mm. like, why am I telling you? Like, if I if something great has happened to me, alhamdulillah, it's cool. Mm. Alhamdulillah, I, this is mm. this great. It's happened to me. Cool, great, great. I don't need to show all my friends. If my friend we talk about it in real life, cool. But what I try to post is stuff that more like inspirational things to help people now because mm. if someone is flicking through that and they see this thing i'm like actually i feel a bit better now i've seen that rather Absolutely. than like it's that so we all do it like that self-validation from social media so i need to post up this picture to mm. get this many likes yeah why if you start questioning yourself why and really understanding why am i doing this mm. it comes it comes down to the thing i just want attention and there's a void that you need to fill um Absolutely. and you shouldn't fill it with mm points on the internet basically you should fill it with more meaningful things and it's very hard to do because we are just suffocated by it all the time absolutely um, but it's, it's tough uh, yeah, yeah it's tough i think it's also the, the hustle and bustle of of life generally mm. people are just mm. uh so disconnected yeah and social media doesn't help with that even no. though they tried to tell us you know contrary to that but um you know, just mm. meeting up with a friend physically or talking yeah. to them over the phone. Yeah. You know, hearing somebody <laughs> else's exactly. voice. It's, These uh, things are, it's become, you know, just text messages, yeah. which. It's uh, it's just become messages online. It's a meme in itself, to be honest. It's mm. like, do you remember when we met up in real life? Nope. Like, <laughs> and when was that? It's, 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 and it's like, it's funny. Like, you know, we use emojis when we text. It's funny because we have all this emotion. Yeah. This emoji, I guarantee when I do the smile, laughing face, I am not laughing at all. Mm. It's so funny how. That's so true. It's it's a bit crazy. But um, what, I don't know. It, I wouldn't say cut it out. Some okay. people, that's good for them to cut it out completely. Like cold turkey, mm. bang, I don't need this anymore. Mm. If you can do that, alhamdulillah. Right. Sometimes life gets quite dry if you do that i've tried it because all your friends are on it and you yeah. feel out of the loop so yeah what i would say is like try to just cut down on it so what i you did so i slowly got rid of facebook deleted mm -hmm. the app i just had it on my browser on my phone okay that was a good that was a good tool okay. then i was like i don't need this anymore rubbish deactivate it mm. they said the same as snapchat and i kept instagram because mm -hmm. it's a it's an open thing people can talk message me whatever it's fine right right um but again, it's limiting your time. So what I was gonna try and do, I was going to have like an old crappy phone I have at home. And okay. I was like, cool, keep this off my main phone, put this on my rubbish phone at home. So I'm only using it when I'm on my rubbish phone. And it's like, sometimes there's so much negativity mm. from social media that mm. you should say no to any, even people in your life generally, like when someone's getting you down, right, right. friends who are getting you do down. Do you find that those things are triggers for you now? So, yeah, some, definitely. you know, somebody mm. being negative yeah. or something that you see pop up on social media mm. or the news. Yeah. Do you, I, per, I personally don't bother reading newspapers. I don't know about you, but. Mm -hmm. um, so what I do now, my kind of, my kind of methodology around that is like, shut the door on it straight away right. you ain't coming in like negativity you're not gonna say anything positive ah you're not coming in so mm. shut no not having it mm. um even when someone starts saying things to me like oh this person's doing this so i'm like i don't care don't don't talk to me about this mm. it, 
Martial art, it takes a lot of strength to it takes time step to in and say that, yeah. but it's practice, like you yeah. say. It's even a mental thing. Like, nope, I'm not going to think about this anymore. Shout out. I'm going right. to do something I like. I'm going right. to go watch a funny film instead. I'm going to, you know what? No, let's watch a funny video on YouTube instead. Right. Shut the door on it. Don't let it in. Because once you start letting it in, it will keep creeping around and it will get out of your head. And then once you've let it in, you've let it in and you're going to have to get it out. But shut the door on negativity. Don't let it in. Mm. Absolutely. Um, what would you say to your younger self? So we spoke a little bit about childhood yeah. and how much um, you were anxious about going back to school and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what would you say to, to like 10 year old Adam? Um, probably do more exercise. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably say, I'll probably say to him, do be yourself. I think when you're growing up, yeah. you always want to see, because it's the funny thing, when, if, when you look back to when you were in school and mm, stuff, mm. it's a bubble of this environment that mm. ev the whole world is in this school, in this college. It's mm. like, it's, it's in this, and everything that matters to you is here. You go there, what, nine to three every day, with these people every day so it's your world and we're like look once you leave you won't care anymore like there's a huge world and if i look back i was like why did i care about that stupid mm. situation um and sometimes just like be yourself like be comfortable right. in yourself because right. if you're um don't try don't try and validate yourself to other people be yourself right. find yourself and it will happen that's kind of it's just like be just be comfortable within yourself Inshallah, That's a hard thing to Inshallah, Allah will make it easy for all of us. I, mean, I, mean. I think it's um, a massive struggle and a massive mm -hmm. kind of, uh, yeah, difficulty finding who you actually are. Mm -hmm. But the minute you accept yourself, yeah. you become, you know, you're closer to achieving that, mm -hmm. Inshallah. Sure. I'd love to hear a bit more about your thoughts on uh, suicide. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. even the term commit, uh, committed suicide, yeah. uh, inverted, you know, commas. Yeah. What do you think about that? Because when we say committed, it's like, that's related to committing a sin or committing yeah. a crime, you know? So, so this is like a big area. I like, I talk about, I, I'm quite vocal about this. So right. if we talk about, so let's talk about men killing themselves in general. I don't commit suicide, I'm killing yourself. That's what mm. it is. Let's just keep it. Cause it's not nice. We shouldn't be kind of making it. A nice thing. Yeah, Committing, I think the terms we're using for it are... Say it for what it is. It is what it is. You, you, and it's not nice, but it isn't nice. So anyway, if we look at the media, so that um, Keith Flint, I think, from The Prodigy, he killed himself. Okay, then there's Anthony Bourdain. Then mm -hmm. there's Chester mm -hmm. from Linkin Park. Then all these people, all these people men killed in himself, the public. Right? Oh, it, yeah. it killed himself. And yeah. if you look at the media, it go, I see, and even people posting online, oh, you'll be missed, rest in peace. You'll be missed oh, he leaves a legacy behind. And it's actually quite disturbing mm -hmm. because you're ignoring what he did, but you're set, you're acting like he passed away in his sleep. He, and these people who commit suicide, men and women, they were under such pain and such a horrible place that they thought, for this to stop, I need to do this. If you actually think about it, yeah, for them to be in that situation, mm -hmm. it's... Exactly. And we're not tackling why they're doing it. Right. We're tackling, we can't just, oh, he'll be missed, RIP. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. that's exactly yeah. moving that's, on. Yeah. That's how we treat yeah. it all the time, and it's like I know there's maybe reasons, drug abuse and whatever, but mm. we're not tackling the core reason why, and we need to stop doing that and be like, look, why did he do it? Why, right. why, why? Right. Um, and if we look at men mm. again, mm. Um, no one. This is a vicious cycle of it. Like, I, <laughs> it's really difficult because. Mm. Um, mm. What do you yeah. think would make it easier for? men young boys to speak out to is their it, loved ones or to their friends uh, um mm. i guess partly education so within, education, within exactly. schools um mm. but also the the family environment mm -hmm. and just amongst ourselves being more open and, and talking about these things for example um if if i think about it if i had a mental health issue like now if i didn't knew any of these resources i felt really bad mm. where would i even go like what would I do? There's no number right. for me to call. I go to right. the GP. Sometimes I feel the GP isn't equipped because that's like, if I have a leg problem, I go there. Mm. There's, there's, we don't have enough resources to really tackle it. Right. And that might be starting schools. That might be starting university. Like if you're feeling down, come right. here, we can have a talk about it. I went right. to Rumi's cave one time. Um, everyone probably knows about it. It's like a mental health. It's like a discussion thing. Alhamdulillah, I went there. Everyone was talking about their problems. It's a lovely community. And that group therapy 
was like amazing. I was like, well, I was actually scared to go. I, was like, I, I haven't heard of this. How did you come across it? It's them? like, it, it was on social media. It's like a place, I think it's North London somewhere. Okay. It's called Rumi's Cave and they do like mental health discussions. Like a Rumi's Muslim, Cave. Yeah, so they went there. I only went once, but mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, it was amazing. And people just talk about how they're battling through their variety of mental health issues from kind of more milder, I want to say mild, but less severe. Okay to more severe and mm. it was just a good discussion about it and I thought there was a lot of men in there as well and I was mm. like there's only a couple men here and I know so many people else suffer with it and I remember reading a few years ago a few months ago maybe um a two, I think two men killed themselves when I and Hajj Umrah and I was like this is the, the why is and this is another example and there's so many examples and there'll be more examples unfortunately but we need to kind of educate and have resources mm. there be like look mm. you don't feel right you're not feeling yourself this isn't Something inside me isn't isn't right. isn't feeling right. right. Where do I go? Like, um, we all know that there is a lot of stigma generally mm -hmm. with mental health, but perhaps more so in the Islamic community. Yeah. Um, what would you say to to people that mm -hmm. you know do stigmatize mental health? I, I, I like um, to give this example. This is this is quite funny. It's not funny. It's a funny example. Okay, so if I have. Uh, Say if you feel you have mental, you have something's not right. You're feeling really low. Mm. You're having anxiety problems. You're doing this. You're doing that. Maybe OCD. Okay, and you go to a just like LMI or something, and like oh, I'm having these problems in my head. And he probably tells you, okay, read Quran more, make wudu, do ruqya. You probably um, you may have gym possession. Call. Cool. Okay, you do that. It doesn't work. That's a, and you know there's a mental health issue. Something's not right. Help in your mental health wise. That's like me. What you just did, going to the imam, which you should do. It's like me going to the doctor for Islamic advice. Mm. You're going to the imam for health advice. Right. So go to the doctor for mm. health advice. Go to the imam for Islamic advice. Say, mm. for example, my imam is low. How can I get it higher? But that's that's cool. But if you're actually struggling with your health and your mental health and you you really aren't feeling, you can't get out of bed in the morning, you're feeling low, right. you've had some trauma that's happened to you. Mm. This is a medical issue. This mm. is not... It's, this needs to be tackled by someone qualified. If you go to the imam, if you go into the imam, go to the sheikh, they're not going to help you because they don't, they unfortunately don't know about it. And that's another thing. Maybe we really should train mm. our Islamic leaders more how to deal with mental health because say if they do, I went to an imam, okay, cool, this brother is having problems. I have some resources here that I can give to him. I'm not just going to say to him, oh, come to the masjid more right. because it's right. not a case of lower man and right. then sometimes you go down the road maybe i'm not a good muslim i've been down that road i'm like mm. Mm. oh this is well, why do i feel like this i'm not good and that's from shaitan as well so Absolutely. you need to you need to do practical things both combine don't right. do one health and islam come mm. together like Absolutely. we should take care of ourselves more basically mm. like you know how like they so like for example my dad does not show any emotion at all yeah like general but like, i know like, the generations are very yeah, different like very different like mm. i don't know if it's asian culture i think probably arab culture and Af african culture is the same like generally men from the past generations they're very they're not very outspoken about how they feel right and i would never go to my dad tell him about anything oh we haven't emotional. spoken about that <laughs> what would you go to your dad for so my, my other person my not dad my mental health my mental i wouldn't go to my dad for my mental health or any general emotional issue mm. something wrong with my car something i need something <laughs> fixed i'll go to my dad for mm. and i think a lot of people um in the muslim community our fathers are like that yeah but that, that that's not their fault because they're from a different generation to us their dads their dads their dads and it's it's different now for us um mm. so what's important for us is we build for the future now. So for example, with your kids, with your, your the little ones in your life, if you tell them how you feel, oh, I'm not happy today, I'm feeling a bit sad today. Right. Uh, if you open up to them- And let them know that it's okay. Yeah, so exactly, it's okay. And it's exactly to talk about how you feel. Mm. And if I'm like, oh, I'll go to someone, oh, I'm not sad, I'm not feeling great today. Do you wanna go play PlayStation? Do you wanna go play football for a bit? Mm. Oh, cool, let's go. And then he, and he or she, they may do the same thing. And if you create a better kind of emotional relationship right. with the people around you, right. it will just, it will just, it's like a catalyst for like a better relationship and Absolutely. more support as you grow up Absolutely. and go through this life. I've, um, I read somewhere that connection is the opposite of depression. So yeah, if you don't maybe. feel, if you don't feel connected to your loved ones, you know, the people exactly. that you're living, you know, <laughs> with under the same roof, then mm -hmm. it's very, very difficult. Exactly. But inshallah, those bonds always have to be worked out. Yeah. You, you know, <laughs> you co you're constantly mm. um, trying to build those relationships and make exactly. them stronger. But 
if we don't talk about our emotions or you go to yeah. dad only for this you know yeah. particular type of th- types of broken. things and yeah. mum for that it's it just you know compounds the stereotypes that we have about men and women as well exactly and you know what society expects that mm-hmm. we should be such and such a way yeah um which i can imagine is very very difficult for men when it comes to um feeling masculine and yeah be a man i hate that phrase like to be a man what does it mean to be a man mm. i need to be i need to show no emotion i need to just provide and mm. i was watching this I've got a documentary and it was like saying that um society sees women's uh women as sex objects society sees men as success objects where men are only valued if we're successful um so all the people all the men in the world the men that you everyone pushes forward a very successful man right. and who defines success and who what does that mean success? exactly like and who defines beauty as well mm. like beauty is an eyes beholder so all these little things they they affect us like right. let me talk about men's body image i think it affects women and men like of course and <laughs> the pressures that are put on all of us absolutely the amount of uh young men suffering from anorexia exactly and, on and steroids you don't think they're they haven't picked up muscles, so they jump on steroids. Mm. They can't, and then all these terrible health problems, mm. um, and then social media feeds into that. It's a cycle. But for example, say if we we took the concept of loving yourself more, yeah, taking steroids and just loving yourself, like um, taking diet pills and like, so yeah. it'd be like d- starving yourself to look good isn't loving yeah. yourself. Um, yeah. And if imagine if I and my friends and my family and all of us supported each other, we all told each other how we felt and we're more open about it. Mm. Um, we kind of, as a team, we move forward together. We're like, we all support each other. It's a proper family. And right. and then I always say this phrase, I've been suffering depression for years. So mm. what, why, why am I just knowing this now? Why did you? Why did I know this now? Why did no mm. one tell me? Um, and then we got to end that. That's, just got to, that's got to be finished. We can't be doing that anymore. Absolutely. And I think mm. another thing that we didn't mention was the fact that there are so many things you can do. It's not, mm. you know, don't think like I'm going to go to the doctor and they're just going to give me some pills. Yeah. Don't let that stop you from going. There's talking therapies. There's so many. There's so much. Um, I get this question a lot. Mm. I get people say, so I'm on 150 milligrams of sectrolin. So okay. I take that every day. And okay. I'll tell her, I'm not, be open about it. Absolutely. Right? So I'm on that. And people ask, oh, I'm, I'm the, the side effects of the medication. Oh, um, I'm really scared to take medication. When I when my therapist told me that, um, I don't maybe try maybe we should jump on medication. Mm-hmm. I started crying, and I look back now. I was like, "What are you crying for?" Like because mm-hmm. I thought oh, I'm actually ill. It's not that they help. Mm-hmm. They actually help. And people think that's a magic pill. Unfortunately, mental health isn't a switch. You can switch on and off. Fine, not fine. Fine. Mm-hmm. It takes time. It's battling. It's fighting. Um, Alhamdulillah, those medication is there to help us at the end of the day exactly um if it works for you what's well, you then and that's don't it. be afraid to try it you know and for me i tell people that medication the therapy the talking therapy yeah the proactive things you do in your life right. all three together yeah is like uh it that's what that's what helps it, there's no yeah. magic pill oh yeah. i'm feel so great today i'm not depressed anymore right. unfortunately it doesn't work like that right you you're you're kind of like Constantly working on you. yourself, exactly. really. Exactly, and it's not just medication. You shouldn't see it like that. It's not mm. paracetamol. Mm. It's, uh, it, it takes time to work. And different factors together Absolutely. push you forward. Absolutely, it's not just one-sided. Like no. if I do this one thing, I'll be okay. I'm done, yeah, no, yeah, it's not like absolutely. that. Unfortunately, it's not. Mm. But um, that's why we have things like Inspirited Minds, for example. Mm amazing articles putting out the emails yeah. i saw it it makes me happy when i read it and again it's positive things on social absolutely, media putting absolutely putting things out like that and it makes you kind of it warms your heart a little bit it increases your well-being it yeah lifts you up for that moment you're feeling down it gives you an example mm. um of how other people are dealing with it they're like cool absolutely. if they can get through it i can get through it absolutely so mm. we spoke about social media but we didn't talk much about the positive sides and actually if you are going to use it why Mm -hmm. don't you follow such and such an organization that shares yeah ayat or or quotes or um Mm -hmm. and there are so many other organizations mashallah that share Mm -hmm. um really impactful powerful things that do lift you up throughout the day Mm -hmm. so you know if you notice that on your feed yeah you know you're following things that do get you down then alter that change it shut out Close the door on it. Like I'm not letting this in, and I'm not letting this affect me anymore. Mm-hmm. And spirited minds got stuff there. What's what's that? That that's that thing that spirited minds are doing. 
that new thing. Like, look after yourself. Yeah, hashtag. Amazing. Love yourself. I, yeah. lo- I love getting those emails because I see yeah. someone with a problem and this is what I do. To, it's like proactive. It's mm. it's not just talking about a problem and no solution. It's like, here's my solution. Have a go at trying it. And alhamdulillah, it re- I love reading the emails. I love seeing the pictures of people like being happy. Mm. And it's just like, this is a great like incubator yeah. of yeah. healing for everybody. And sharing struggles. Yeah. I think it's massive. Mm-hmm. Because and like you say, if you can see somebody else has gone through it as well, it's not just you exactly. and they have come out the other end. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And it's it's just a battle together. And the, one of the things that I also feel is that as Muslims, this is why Islam is so tightly connected to the mental health thing. Mm-hmm. It's like, don't start comparing your life. Like this is the end, like this is, this is just a chapter. Mm. The happy ending of this book, of your journey, isn't in this life. Inshallah, it's in the next life. Absolutely. So don't. there's no top of the mountain here. Like, there's no, oh, once I do this, for example, when I get married and have kids, oh, I'm done. I've finished. First place for me. Right. No, unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. Right. And we know it doesn't work like we that. We just have to constantly ground ourselves. Ground yourself. Like, mm. the, ne- the happy ending is in the next life. Let me build yes. here for my happy ending. Absolutely. And like you said, comparing yourself as well to... Just even your loved ones, your friends around you, like, yeah. oh, I'm 25, uh, mm-hmm. but I haven't got married yet. Or, yeah. you know, my friends, 25 or 26, whatever. They've you're comparing, they've got a car, they've, yeah, got, a car, yeah. they've got a house. It, it, um, it's not. And you are where you're meant to be right exactly. now. Exactly. Allah, Allah put you here. This is it. Alhamdulillah. Mm. You, and to cloud your blessings as well. Absolutely. You've got amazing people around you. You may not have this, you may not have that, you may have lost this, but mm. Alhamdulillah, look where mm. I am now. Mm. And. Who knows, Allah could change your life in a second. He Absolutely. could give you so much happiness in a second. He'll take it away. It'll come and go, ups and downs in this life. Um, and one thing that I want to talk about is women on social media. Now this is, I feel the sisters really have such a hard time, mm. especially around beauty. I have a opinion on hijabi bloggers basically. Mm-hmm. And I feel <laughs> that I really feel bad for the younger sisters coming up because in school you're trying to find yourself right and we put such an emphasis mm. on all your value as a woman is your outer your beauty. appearance like that's mm. ridiculous like mm. your beauty will fade and if your main value as a human as a woman is the way you look it's it's like when that goes Absolutely. it's gone and then when i keep pushing out on social media look mm. how i look look how i look imagine mm. if i don't get as many likes oh my god i feel terrible like yeah you're paying all your validation what other people feel. Absolutely. And there's a trickle effect on all the sisters. And I know I feel bad. Even when I see like Cristiano Ronaldo looking amazing, I'm like, oh man, no, this, is, this is what I need to be yeah. like. And it's 10 times worth for sisters. And to be, you, it's like you, your value is so much more than that. Absolutely. Like, empower yourself. You don't need that. You don't need that. You can, there's amazing sisters who are studying PhDs, doctors, professors Absolutely. who are really changing the world. And unfortunately, if you have a pretty face, congratulations, but that's it. Mm. There's nothing else. There's no more, there's more meaning to it. Um, so I can see how women can get especially affected from social media, especially this beauty culture we have. Who defines a beauty? Not Mm. Kim Kardashian. Um, Love yourself. It comes from yourself. It comes with yourself and love yourself and change the world and do great things. Don't take pictures of yourself every day because no one one really cares to be honest. (laughs) And it's not good for you. It's true. (laughs) It's true, it's true, unfortunately. So um, one thing we haven't spoken about is the future and Mm -hmm. what other things you'd like to do. And also in terms of mental health, um, how you would ideally like to see it in the future Um, actually being. I think what I want to see in the future is like more resources, especially in the Islamic community. Um, Like we keep them so separate. They come hand in hand, Islam, mental health, they come together. Right. and we need to train and educate Islamic leaders, imams, even our general, like our teachers, Absolutely. how to deal with this. Because you should be totally comfortable to go to your sheikh, go to your imam and be like, I'm suffering this and like, cool. Yeah, yeah. And that they it's are just, equipped yeah, the to actually to be able to support you. Exactly. I know it's written minds do imam training and that's just one little thing that could help the Muslim community. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. The imam training mm. that, that um, we do should mm-hmm. you know we're we're trying to expand that inshallah and mm-hmm. go to inshallah. lots of different mm-hmm. places as many mm-hmm. as possible and to exactly and imagine if you could just go to your mosque and be like cool imam i'm suffering with this right he could give you the islamic side of things about mm. having examples of what allah told us to do and what allah says in the mm. Quran, and also some practical stuff which you can do now 
in terms of health wise, how to think, how to right. be more right. mindful. A more kind to... of holistic approach. Exactly. So if you have mm. both, it's mm. a very good, it's you're very well equipped and you have like this nice armory of things to tackle these, right. these things that come at you. Right. And your own personal development in the future, what are you looking at doing? Uh, <laughs> What's your vision? Um, I just wanna I just kinda wanna speak more on like a like a bigger platform. I feel the government can do a lot more. Mm. The NHS can do, but I know there's a lot of limits on the NHS. Absolutely, um, lots of pressure and lack a lot of, of funding. Pressure. And there's so many, we're all humans, we all kind of suffer from it, even the doctors and the mm. therapists themselves in NHS suffer with these kind of things. Um, Absolutely. At work. I mean I mean if we on a bigger platform if we talk about it more and we're not scared to talk about it i mm. can bring up to my like friends who i work out with i can bring up i'm depressed i'm feeling i'm feeling low if we can bring that up and that's more normal then I'm things will progress. slowly get yeah, better. slowly get better yeah absolutely mm -hmm. um one of the questions that we did have for you from social media was mm -hmm. about your favorite ayah so do you have one I've, that I've you can share it. with it's us it's not my favorite ayah. so this is something that i like to read um yeah. this is in that the interrogative minds kind of article that i wrote yeah um i'll read it out so but it's not an ayah it's a hadith um and basically, I'll read it out. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, um, whoever is afflicted with grief or anxiety, then he should pray these words. O oh Allah, certainly I am your slave, the son of your male slave and the son of your female slave. My forehead is in your hand. Your judgment upon me is assured and your decree concerning me is just. I ask you by every name that you named yourself with, revealed in your book, taught any one of your creation or kept unto yourself in the knowledge of the unseen that is with you to make the Qur'an the spirit of my heart and the light of my chest, the banisher of my sadness and the reliever of my distress. And that's from Muz, Muznad Imam Ahmed. Um, and that's just a beautiful hadith because it's very to the beautiful. point um, and it's very, it kind of shows even the Prophet Sallallahu so Alaihi he suffered with the same things we're going through. Absolutely. And it's such a, it's so very to the point and it, it makes you feel the Qur'an in my chest, the light in my chest. And that's another thing which is very proactive. I didn't know Arabic, couldn't even read a word properly about two, three years ago. Right. And what I did, I went to Ibrahim College and I went to Imam Shah to be institute and he's like Quran studying things. Um, classes. Which college? Ibrahim College. Ibrahim. It's um, in East London. Okay. And Imam Shah to be institute, that's in West London. And I started to learn how to read the Quran. And a Quran is a cure in itself as well. And right. when I started learning to recite properly and actually recite properly, Alhamdulillah, if I pick it up and I'm feeling down, Wallahi, it honestly lifts my mood up and it, it it makes me feel better. And when mm -hmm. some brothers who suffer with OCD as well, they said to me, read Surah Nas, Surah Falaq, um, mm -hmm. and that helps as well. It's like, mm -hmm. the, it literally is a cure, but you have to kind of give your heart to it as well. You need to embed the Quran in your heart right. to really get the full kind of benefits from it. It's not just reading the English translation. Mm -hmm. The Quran has revealed, as you recite it, it, well, it does help and it, there's a sense of tranquility when you do read it. Yeah, I think it makes a massive difference. It Even does, if does. you don't necessarily understand the Arabic mm -hmm. or if that's not your, mm -hmm. you know, mother tongue. Yeah, um, I was not just, mine at all. Just, just yeah. the, rhythm it, the rhythm and hearing it, the recitation, it's yeah. incredible. And it was a blessing in even learning itself when I'm like proactively learning with my teacher I went I started to do one-on-one -on -one classes because fitting around work mm. and it is like it's very much a therapy in itself like going to your teacher sitting down reciting this sort of and then you go back and you remember it and it's in your head and like sometimes when you feel inside you recite it or you just open up the Quran I'm gonna read this sort of today and you like pull your heart out into it mm. it really does and it affects your salah as well so when you're when you learn these sorters, it absolutely it really gives me meaning to it, and something it makes it a much more emotional kind of connection with our lives. Absolutely, life. I think giving yeah, time better. to those things, Definitely. it's just so much full of benefit. Mm -hmm. There's, mm -hmm. um, it's only positive, mm -hmm. and including looking at um, tafsir and understanding yeah, exactly. where the ayahs have come from, mm -hmm. that really kind of you know helps you understand exactly and it's on youtube you can go so many shifts on youtube that can explain tough to you but you've got to take it's again you've got to take the measures to do it like for me sometimes when i read the english translation it doesn't depict what actually allah is actually saying to us in the quran right. so you really have to it's a thing about again loving yourself doing what's good for you learning the quran learning how to recite isn't just a thing you should do it because you need to be mm. religious it's mm. something that can proactively help you so you're doing it for yourself, you it's it not for a chore. Allah gave us salah to help us. What does it need us to pray to him? Absolutely. So it's a, it's a book of philosophy. It's a very deep book, it's a gift. And use it as a piece of healing. Don't use it because my mom told me to be more religious. Mm. I need to mm. do it. Use it because it's a tool 
to make yourself yeah. feel better. Make that choice, inshallah, exactly, for yourself. Inshallah. Exactly. And Allah will make it easy. And it will, inshallah. So um, it's been amazing talking to you. Um, yeah, if people want to contact you again, mm -hmm. Instagram, how Instagram, can they find my you? My username is really weird. It's uh, Abdebo. <laughs> yeah, sorry. You're going to have to put it in the link description <laughs> okay, or something. We'll do that. We'll uh, do that. But message me. Don't feel, uh, uh, I don't want to disturb you. Just message me. Yeah. If it's if I can't help you, I'm going to say it to you. Um, if I can help you, I'll point you in the right direction. Um, simple as that. Amazing. Thanks again. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum Jazakallah khair for joining us this session. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, join us again, inshallah, for more interesting conversations. Um, if you'd like to email us uh, with any questions or suggestions for uh, other potential guests um, or anything that you'd like to comment on, uh, please do contact us at info at inspiritedminds.org.uk.